Got another one of these great approximation formulas to approximate the area under a curve, to approximate the definite integral. And this one's called Simpson's approximation or Simpson's rule. And this is probably the most annoying one. So if you've done the midpoint rule, the left, left hand sum rule, the right hand sum rule and the trapezoid rule, if you've done all of those, now it's time to learn Simpson's rule. It's the most complicated and basically Instead of picking the left end point, the right end point, the midpoint, or using trapezoids to approximate the area under the curve, we are using trapezoids based on the tangent line. So again, I've drawn a really poor picture here, but if you can imagine me writing out my x1s and x2s, I didn't do all of them, I only did a couple, and we look at the midpoint, I go up to the midpoint and I draw the tangent line there, and I connect the tangent line with my x1 and x0, and that's the trapezoid that I'm going to use to approximate the area using the tangent line. So it's not really too important where this is coming from. All you really have to do is memorize this chunk of a formula, and well, here it is. Sorry. That's long. It's S sub n, so that's the Simpson's approximation with n rectangles or n sub intervals. And this time it's delta x over 3. Remember that delta x is b minus a over n. So the trapezoid rule was delta x over 2, Simpson's rule is delta x over 3, and it's times this summation, this sum, and it's f of x naught. So just like the trapezoid rule, there's a 1 in front of this one. And then it's plus 4 f of x1, plus 2 f of x2, plus 4 f of x3, and this alternates. So all the middle terms in here switch between 4s and 2s. In the trapezoid rule, they were all just 2s. And up until the very end, the very last point, f of xn, that gets a 1 in front of it, just like the trapezoid rule. So I'll do the example that I've been using with the midpoint trapezoid rule and this rule. It's f of x equals x squared on 0 to 3 with 6 rectangles or 6 trapezoids or 6 whatever, 6 sub-intervals. And that means I'm going to do s sub 6. And that formula is delta x over 3. Remember, delta x is b, that's 3, minus a, that's 0, over n, that's 6. 3 over 6 is a half, and if you watch the other videos, this part's the same. Okay, so I do delta x, which is 1 half, over 3. And then I have to do f of x naught, that's the first point, so that's a, so that's 0, f of 0. And then following this sum, I do plus 4 f of x1. How do I get from x0 to x1? I add on delta x. So to get from 0 to the next one, I need to add 1 half. 0 plus a half is 1 half. And then I need to do 2. So it goes from 4 to 2. 2 times f of x2. How do I get from x1 to x2? To x2, I add delta x. So 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So 4, 2, I'm back to 4. f of x3, how do I get from x2 to x3? I add a half. 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And this is very similar, again, if you watch my other videos on the midpoint and trapezoid rule. I go from 4, now I'm at 2. f of 3 halves plus a half is 4 halves, or 2. I switch from 2 to 4. f of 2 plus a half is 5 halves. And now, hey, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. need one more. So this is going to be uh, my last one, because if I add a half, I'd be at 6 halves, or 3. And my very last one does not get any coefficient other than one. I just, my first and last points only have one and everything in, in the middle goes from four to two back and forth. Whew, that's the setup. Now I just need to plug all of these values into my function x squared. One half divided by three. I think that's gonna be a six, a sixth. 
and then I do f of zero. So I plug zero into my function, that's zero squared, plus four times I plug one half into my function, that's one half squared, plus two, I plug in one, that's one squared, plus four times I plug in three halves, that's three halves squared, plus two, plug in two squared, plus four, plug in five halves, and then plus one times plug in three, that's three squared. And again, I'm not gonna actually do this for you, I'm gonna be lazy. If you want the actual answer, you can just plug this into a calculator, but uh, that's how you do it. That's how you set up Simpson's approximation. If I went a little too fast for you, please watch the video again. And I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching all of these boring approximation videos. I really hope they helped you and have a great day.